Hello, welcome back to Pediatric Survival Swim. My name is Allison Hogue and I am a survival swimming specialist here in Riverview, Florida. Today I wanted to talk about um, the differences between traditional swimming lessons and survival swimming lessons. And I feel like both have kind of gotten a bad rap from both sides. And I'm not here to choose one over the other. I just want to give out the information um, and the differences between traditional swim lessons and survival swim lessons so that you can make the best choice for your family when it comes to your survival aquatic family water needs. Um, if you are first time watching our videos, um, please subscribe to our channel. We are here to provide education and provide uh, statistics about the leading cause of death in children under the age of five and the second leading cause of death in children ages five to 15. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, traditional lessons. Traditional lessons usually involve a group, a group lesson, um, whereas survival swimming lessons um, usually just private one-on-one -on -one instruction. Um, that way the whole lesson is dedicated to just one child. Um, I myself am a survival swimming specialist, like I said um, in my intro, and so for me, I feel more comfortable one-on-one, um, -on -one, always having my eyes on that child. Um, and a traditional um, lesson usually involves a group, and that could be of one or more instructors, sometimes two, and I've even seen three, um, being um, from personal experience as a mom and having a child in traditional swim lessons um, before, and then myself um, as a child, taking um, traditional swim lessons. And then I've had lots of experience um, with my children having survival swim lessons and also being an instructor on that side. So I feel like I've had um, some experience in both, dabbling in both. And I can de definitely tell you there's pros and cons to both as well. Traditional lessons usually um, are about 30 minutes um, to an hour long. And sometimes that varies depending on your swim school, where you're at, your instructor, but those can typically run one to three times a week. Whereas survival swimming instruction, usually about 10 to 15 minutes alone, because like I said, it doesn't seem like a lot of time, but that time is specifically dedicated just to your one child. Um, so it's a shorter lesson. Um, those lessons usually run four to five times a week, depending on your instructor, like I said, or whether or not you have the 10 minute or 15 minute. I personally do the 15 minute lessons four days a week, and that usually works for me. Um, survival swimming instruction usually takes about six weeks, um, sometimes a little longer depending on the student. Um, and sometimes it could take as little as four weeks. So um, it really just depends on how old your child is, how much experience your child has had. But usually, I would say between four to eight weeks, um, your child is um, swimming. Um, traditional group lessons, because sometimes they're uh, spread out one to three times a week, it can usually take um, a longer period of time, or they give them, um, provide these lessons in a series. So you may have four lessons for one week, and then you have to sign up to take uh, additional lessons, um, or there is no end date. You just um, go each week until you see the progression that you um, want or your instructor feels is um, necessary, and there's not um, an end date that usually comes with like a membership or that sort of thing. That's the two that I've seen, um, a series or no end date for the traditional. Um, traditional lessons may or may not um, include full face submersion swim, where the face is in the water, um, under the water for the swim. Um, it may or may not include that. Some um, have the chin up and swimming. Um, but for survival swimming lessons, they do require and incorporate full submersion, um, which makes uh, the child horizontal in the water. So that's why we promote it. Um, it also promotes breath control, letting our children know how to, um, how to control their breathing um, and what to do in that 
fall-in situation. So we do a full submersion horizontal swims. Um, and traditional lessons, again, everybody's different. There's, there's no one method. So uh, traditional may or may not include that. It just depends on uh, what you're comfortable with and what you're looking for. Uh, traditional lessons may or may not, again, a lot of these are may or may not because sometimes you're just not sure, whereas the survival swimming series, I'm uh, most 90, 90 to 100% of the instructors um, have been uh, trained in this area so that we kind of all do the same thing. Um, so traditional lessons may or may not teach breath control, uh, what that looks like, some teach blowing bubbles out of your mouth um, while underwater. Survival swimming does not teach that. We teach to hold your bubble, hold your breath, um, because you you don't wanna blow it out because you don't know when you're gonna get another one. Um, hopefully you will get another one, but um, so they teach breath control, not to open your mouth, not to swallow that water while you're in the pool. Um, Traditional lessons may or may not incorporate a roll to a float. Um, most that I have seen and experienced uh, use the head up position and they swim the length of the pool with the head up. So they teach more about distance and how to get across that pool with distance. Some people feel that it's safer to keep that head above water constantly getting that oxygen. So survival swimming lessons, um, we sequence in a swim, roll to a float and hold, and then back to a swim. And we repeat that sequence all the way across the pool if the child is old enough to, to where we get a, um, let me do it this way, swim, float, swim, float, and swim all the way to the edge. So we like to incorporate that float because um, I, we feel like it's vital in getting sufficient quality air um, to keep from drowning. Um, so again, it's just, it uh, depends on your preference. Um, traditional may or may not teach you how to look for an exit in the pool. Um, they may teach this, I'm not sure, um, based on my personal experience um, and what I've seen. Many um, don't teach this, but they do teach, um, many of them do teach how to grab onto the wall while waiting their turn. So I guess that could be a little bit of um, how to get out of the pool. You have to have that great uh, control. Um, swimming, survival swimming instruction does teach this. We teach how to find a wall as soon as you fall in. Um, grab that wall if you can, or turn to a float turn back over and swim to find a wall. Um, for me personally, one of my checkouts uh, requirements, I place you in the middle of the pool. You have to come up to a float and you have to look around and find the closest exit. So a little bit of aquatic problem solving there. Um, you can look for ladders. You can look for um, the edge of the pool. You, you can look for the stairs as well. Um, so again, may or may not teach that in traditional. Um, most survival swim lesson instruction does teach that. Um, traditional lessons usually begin at age three and may or may not teach a role to a float. So um, most usually the reason for that is because um, it's a group lesson. So they want to make sure their children are old enough to hold on to the side, pay attention, follow directions, um, and not... Um, slip under the water or um, be able to uh, follow commands. Um, whereas survival swimming lessons can start as early as six months old because again, it's a one-on-one -on -one instruction. So we don't have to worry about multiple students. So um, we are able to teach younger students and we also teach uh, fall in, roll to a float and hold. Um, for, for the little babies um, until they can maneuver throughout the pool and work on that swim, float, swim sequence. Um, so that's something that they do. I'm going to switch out my paper here to continue the traditional versus survival swim um, differences. Okay. Traditional lessons may or may not teach um, swimming strokes. I think that they do. Uh, this may be in older children. This may not be in three years of age. It may just depend on your child. I'm not sure. Um, so they may or may not teach different strokes. Survival swimming instructors 
may or may not teach different strokes. Just depending, they may just do the face down position and um, teach how to get out more of using like a freestyle. Um, it just depends on your instructor. Me personally, for my older students, usually about three years and older, I teach the freestyle and I teach the backstroke. I think these are both, both very important um, strokes to teach um, children for the uh, survival swimming technique. Um, we're working on survival. What's the best way to get out of this situation? Would a backstroke be the best? You're getting constant sufficient air or will a swim float swim suffice? Will that do? Um, that's just my personal preference. So may or may not teach um, different strokes for both sides. Um, traditional lessons may or may not teach survival and aquatic solving skills, aquatic problem solving skills. This um, may or may not be the situation for survival swimming instructors as well. Um, I would say that a swim to a float is uh, an aquatic problem solving technique because again you're you are under the water and your problem solving is to roll to that float and hold and wait for help and not drown <laughs> so being able to um, incorporate that balance and keeping the face um, full and free um, to breathe so for me um, I teach a, a few extra tips and tricks and techniques for my aquatic problem solving um, course, and uh, which is just the survival swimming course. So for children, usually three and up, I teach, uh, depending on how they uh, check out of my series, I will teach what's called a tuck and roll. And so for me, that's when a child um, is faced with somebody else pulling him under the water. Usually that's another student, another child that is scared that can not swim very well. And so they're using another child as leverage to get up and get that air. So what I teach um, my students, um, usually it's the older students because they grab the bigger students to try to help themselves when they're drowning. So I teach, um, save yourself. You got to tuck down and you got to roll out of that tuck and roll. Um, I also teach how to get from a vertical standing posture in the water if you're in the shallow end and you find yourself accidentally um, in the deep end when you're on that slope and what many pools have, my pool has that as well, so I teach that a lot, is to get from a vertical standing position up back to a float as well and then how to swim, float, swim out of that. Um, I think that part is very important. So that may or may not be taught in traditional or survival swim lessons. It just depends on your instructor. And if that's something that you're looking for, look around, ask, and, or ask the instructor to specifically teach that, if that's something that you're looking for. Um, another thing is that traditional um, instructors may or may not have received um, more in-depth um, training as far as the psycho psychology and child behavior um, survival swimming instructors do get that training we also get the physiology training um, more about the child body what to look for what um, what are some uncommon behaviors that may lead to some medical issues such as um, whether or not to figure out if a child is seizing in the water, whether or not they're having allergic reaction or um, having an asthma, asthma issues, asthma attack, um, different things to be looking for. As an instructor, you always want to be on top of your game and making sure that the child safety is priority number one. So um, survival swimming instruction does incorporate a lot more um, study and reading and research and um, training on that extra material. And so I'm not 100% sure. I think it may just depend on um, your instructor again for the traditional lessons and maybe even the swim school itself, whether or not they are teaching that to their um, to their instructors, I'm not sure. So um, traditional instruction may or may not teach the parent how to swim with the child or to 
get a specific skill from that child once that child has mastered the skills needed to swim. Traditional may or may not offer that, and survival swimming instructors, some may or may not offer that as well. Um, I know some that do, and I know some that do not. I personally do. I think it's very important um, to get that um, parent in the water, show them how to launch their student, their child, how to properly swim with them to keep and maintain that skill um, throughout the whole summer and to keep from um, interference. So that's usually uh, where a child develops a habit that keeps them from properly maintaining their skill once it's learned. And usually that has to do with interference or a parent or um, an adult coming in and kind of messing that up, not on purpose, but um, just adding an extra layer to that that may throw off something and the child no longer knows how to float or won't um, flip back over to swim or won't flip over to float, that sort of thing that's interference. So I always wanna teach that um, parent how to get that skill um, and then they can have more successful um, time in the water with their child while, while maintaining um, a fresh set of uh, survival aquatic skills. And then lastly, um, I have traditional swim lessons may or may not have an exit test or a checkout, um, as we call it. And some do, some may. You have to swim across the whole pool before you can pass and move on to the next level or um, like I said, some traditional lessons just have you get um, this series for a week and that's it. And then you have to sign up for another one. So there may or may not be a checkout with that. Um, but if you have one that doesn't have an end date when the instructor feels like it is sufficient, the traditional instruction may or may not include a survival swimming checkout. They have to be able to perform a certain set of skills before they can move on or stop the program. Survival swimming instruction always has a checkout at the end, um, making sure that these skills are put to good use. We will do a um, survival simulation. For me, what that looks like is placing the child into the water face down um, at, from different angles, from a uh, fall-in position to a vertical position, and making sure that they can use the skills that they have learned and mastered um, in real life simulations and situations to be able to perform because you want to make sure that they are absolutely good before you dismiss them and check them out and let them start swimming out um, on their own. So, uh, I believe most survival instructors do um, require that. Um, so that was my uh, survival or traditional versus survival swimming T-chart to compare. Um, I'm trying not to uh, bash or take favor in one or the other. Um, I'm really trying to keep it neutral because there are um, some pros and cons to both. Um, I believe both instruction is very different and one may be more suitable for you and your family. Um, one may be more suitable for your schedules. Um, that's a big thing that we see a lot of is, you know, schedule is very important. Children come after school or, or parents that work. Um, so schedule is a big factor. And um, also the uh, cost um, may play a factor as well. Traditional lessons sometimes cost less because like I said, it's a group setting. So they are able to charge less per child or um, they have it more of a, a rotation. You get this many per month. Um, so you pay on a monthly basis, whereas survival swimming instruction, a lot of us pay um, per week. So sometimes that can be costly when you're only dealing with six to eight week increments and all that money is kind of due around that same time. So um, again, you have to weigh your, your options here and see what's best for you, you and your family and your children. Um, and some of these resources may not be available to you, so you are just trying to use what you have. <clears throat> Please remember that any um, formal swimming instruction can help reduce the risk of drowning in your child by up to 88%. So any instruction, any formal swimming instruction is better than no instruction at all. 
Um, so I think that that's very important. And it's very important that we pass along this education to our friends and family as well, because we all know somebody with a child and they may or may not know this, um, the statistics involving drowning in children and just how common it really is. So we, we need to be, you know, proclaiming this message and, and spreading it to the masses and, and really letting everyone know that drowning is preventable and that there are some ways that you can, you can help prevent becoming um, a part of that statistic. So um, that is all I have for you today. Woo, that's kind of a long video, but we got through it. Um, please, uh, again, like the video, uh, pass it along to your friends, subscribe to our channel so we can keep providing education for you and your family. I hope you have a great rest of your week and we will see you again next time. Thanks so much, guys.